Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I come to the uh, House floor as a result of a town meeting I had in my congressional district in which I heard from the Harvest Christian Church. It goes to the uh, point that the United States and India, as all of us know, are the world's two largest democracies. However, although the Indian national government guarantees religious freedom, in many of the provinces, oppression and persecution still exist. And I want to bring that to my colleagues' attention this morning. Harvest Christian Church in my home district has worked closely with many church groups in India. And as I mentioned during my last town meeting, the pastor, Crow, shared with me some of the disturbing things that are happening there. On April 1st, during Palm Sunday celebrations in Jaipur, in the middle of their worship service, about 30 people from Hindu extremist group, whose name literally means religious army, came with sticks and started beating everybody, including the evangelists and the men and women and children who were in the congregation that day. The pastor was badly beaten and suffer a severe head injury. These people were admitted in the hospital uh, where people from the group went and threatened them. They decided to leave the hospital and are currently staying at undisclosed locations. The attackers remained unpunished for these crimes. In fact, that day, no one from the government condemned the attack or sympathized with the victims or terrorized or the terrorized Chris Christian community. Not to speak of offering any relief to the family that were affected by this terrorist group. The police authorities, though reluctant to name the forces behind the attack, announced finally the arrest of five persons. All were from a radical Hindu background and lived in the slums a pastor used to visit regularly. Persecution such as this is not uncommon in India and these sorts of attacks are not uh, isolated incidences. And my colleagues, in another example, a mob of around 50 Hindu extremists surrounded a house church the night of April 22nd and began shouting derogatory statements at all the worshipers uh, in the church. Terrified believers in the church shut the doors. They phoned the local police and asked for help. Two policemen arrived and two pastors to the police station. En route, a few activists began beating and insulting the pastors and four other believers who had accompanied them as the police officer simply looked on. Quote, at the station, the police shouted at the pastors and the extremists who were present made accusations that the pastors were forcibly converting people, inciting the people to stop doing Hindu rituals and to remove pictures of Hindu deities from their houses, end quote, George said. The tirade continued until 3 a.m. when the pastors were jailed, not being released on, may on bail until April 25th. The police inspector stated the pastors were charged with promoting enmity between different groups on grounds of religion. And, quote, deliberate and malicious acts intended to outrage religious feelings or any class by insulting its religion or religious beliefs. While there is ongoing violence against Christians in India, the good news is that it is, is endemic and the number of incidences are not increasing. The BJP is a Hindu political party, which was in national power until, uh, until 2004, when the secular Constitution Party then came to power. However, they still retain positions of power in some states, and it is there where the majority of attacks against Christians occur. According to the State Department, International Religious Freedom Report 2006, quote, the Constitution provides for freedom of religion, and the government generally respects this right in practice. However, the government sometimes did not act swiftly enough to counter effectively societal attacks against religious minorities and attempts by some leaders of state and local government to limit religious freedom. Despite government efforts to foster communal harmony, some extremists continue to view ineffective investigations and prosecution of attacks on religious minorities, particularly at the state and local level, as a signal that they could commit such violence in uh, with impunity, end quote. So my colleagues, this is a situation that must not be tolerated. The frequency of these attacks and the lack of prosecution of extremists who perpetuate these crimes are in direct opposition to the most basic tenets 
of our democracy and surely the democracy in India. So I urge the Indian government to protect religious minorities and to take strong, strong steps to enforce their constitutional laws regarding religious freedom in these oppressive provinces. I yield back the balance. 